This is Akashavani Mangaluru. Dear listeners, welcome to today's Talk in English program. Every year, September 10 is observed as World Suicide Prevention Day. In this connection, Mrs. Sanju Pant, lecturer, Manipal College of Nursing, Mahe Manipal, will now speak on the topic, Our Responsibilities in Preventing Suicide. Today we came together to observe Suicide Prevention Day, a day dedicated to raising awareness, offering support and fostering conversation about mental health. And for the next 14 minutes, we'll explore the importance of suicide prevention, share valuable resources and talk about the ways we can support ourselves and those around us. Suicide is a serious public concern that affects millions of people around the world. It's not just a personal tragedy, but a community concern. According to WHO, that is World Health Organization, over 7 lakh people die of suicide each year. This translates to about 1.4% of all deaths globally. And if we talk about Indian scenario, so according to National Crime Record Bureau, that is NCRB of India, Around 1,54,000 suicides were reported in 2021, which represents a rate of approximately 11.2% suicides per lakh people. And if we see the prevalence of suicide in Karnataka, the statistics says that around 14,000 suicides rate of approximately 127 per lakh people committed suicide in the year of 2021. Now we'll see how the reasons gender and age makes a difference when we talk about suicide. Generally, the countries like South Korea and Japan reports the higher rate of suicide as compared to the low or the middle income countries like India. Men are generally at the higher risk of suicide than the women. But if we see globally, men are about 1.8 times more likely to die by suicide than the women. However, Women are more likely to attempt the suicides. Suicide rates also vary by age groups. In many parts of the world, older adults and the young people, especially the teenagers and the young adults are at the higher risk of committing suicide. That's more than the combined deaths from wars or the natural disasters. It's crucial to understand that suicide often results from untreated mental health conditions such as depression, anxiety and bipolar disorders. But remember, suicidal thoughts can affect anyone regardless of age, gender and background. The good news is that there is a hope and many lives can be saved with the right support and interventions. Now we'll see the causes which are responsible or which can be a risk factor for someone to commit the suicide. In India, suicide is a complex issue influenced by a variety of social, economical as well as the psychological factors. There are few causes that I will be discussing. So the first one comes the mental health issues. So as I told you previously, depression, anxiety, bipolar disorders and other mental health conditions are the significant risk factors for someone to commit or attempt suicide. As we know, the stigma surrounding mental health often prevents the individual from seeking the help. The second factor which is very responsible for causing suicide is the economical distress. Yes, financial problems, the unemployment, the poverty or the debt are the major contributors for someone to commit suicide. For instance, farmers facing crop failures and debt may experience highlighted stress leading to suicide in India. One major problem comes with the family. That also becomes a factor for someone to commit suicide. For example, domestic violence in the family, marital issues or conflict or family conflicts we can say. Problems such as divorce or separation can also be a significant stressor for someone to commit suicide. If we talk about teenagers, yes, academic or the adults will have always career pressure. So young people often face immense pressure to succeed academically or professionally. The stress associated with exam, the competition and the career expectations can lead to the feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness in them and they can commit suicide. If we talk about our society 
and cultural factors so yes we all know that we the society has expectations from us so discrimination the social isolation contributes to the societal risk social issues such as caste discrimination or the gender biased violence can also play a role in someone's life to attempt for suicide health issues like chronic illnesses like cancer hiv in many more disabilities or severe health conditions can also lead to mental distress and suicidal thoughts in someone nowadays so substance abuse is very common and it is also one of the biggest risk for someone to commit suicide substance use often exacerbates the underlying mental health issues and impairs the judgment of the person and makes them prone to commit suicide or attempt suicide nowadays we see that the family structure has become a nuclear family rather than a joint family so lack of support system lack of social support isolation or lack of access to mental health services can make individuals more vulnerable rural areas have limited access to the mental health services so the in rural areas the chances of suicides are more if we talk about historical or economical factors yes historical factors like displacement due to conflicts or any natural disasters as well as ongoing socio economic inequalities can contribute to societal risk the major risk factor is the traumatic events if anyone experiences any form of abuse any form of trauma or any significant life changes it can be a loss of a loved one can trigger the suicidal ideation in a person efforts to address these causes include improving mental health services reducing the stigma providing the economical support and enhancing community and family support systems increasing awareness and access to mental health care along with target prevention strategies are crucial in addressing the multifaceted issues of suicide in india so these were all about the causes or the risk factor that can make someone to commit or attempt suicide so how to recognize that the person can attempt suicide or person has the ideation to commit suicide so yes there are some warning signs that we have to recognize as a individual as a healthcare professional so identifying the warning sign of suicide can be the first step to prevent it so the first one is talk about wanting to die this can include making statements like i wish i were dead or i don't want to live anymore so if a person speaks like that so it can be a warning sign that the person has the ideation to commit suicide the second warning sign can be having a extreme mood swings or fluctuation in the mood so noticeable shift in mood or a behavior of a person especially if someone seems usually calm after a period of depression so they may have the symptoms or they may have the ideation of committing suicide third warning sign can be withdrawal it can be withdrawal from their own personal things from their family from their friends from the activities they used to enjoy previously then yes the person can have changes in their sleep and appetite so there are significant changes has been seen in researches that the people who suffer from depression or who are having ideations or who wants to attempt suicide they had a significant change in their appetite as well as in their sleeping pattern yes so as i told you in the causing factor substance use can be a factor so similarly here also if a person is consuming a lot of alcohol or any drugs amount has increased so yes the chances are there the person is depressed or either wants to commit or they have a idea where they want to commit suicide so if you or someone you know is showing these signs it's essential to seek the help immediately now let us talk about how to help so helping someone who might be struggling with suicidal thoughts can feel daunting but your support can make a significant difference in someone's life so here are a few steps that you can take the first step comes is listening listening without any judgment sometimes just being there 
or listening can provide immense comfort to anyone let them talk about their feeling without trying to offer solutions right away so listening can be a important thing that as a individual we all can do to prevent suicides second thing is if you see anyone is showing any type of warning signs yes we can encourage them to take any professional help gently suggest they speak with a mental health professional offer to help them find resources or accompany them to appointments so you can go with them and you can help them so that they can talk to any of the health professionals the third thing as a individual we can do is stay connected regularly check-ins can provide ongoing support and show that you are there with them in any situation the fourth help as an individual we can do is be aware of any immediate dangers if someone is in immediate danger don't hesitate to connect emergency services or take them to the nearest emergency room if the person has committed or tried to attempt suicide so yes that is a dangerous situation and we can always approach the hospitals at that situations remember it's okay to reach out for help yourself if you are unsure how to support someone if you have found someone or if you feel that someone has suicidal attempts so yes you can go any time to any professional and you can ask for help now there are few resources and supports we have many resources available for anyone in india for help and looking out for the supports for other first we have national suicide prevention lifeline that is available 24 into 7 just dial 988 for free and confidential support there are few crisis text line text hello to 741741 to connect with a trained crisis counselor there are few local mental health services many communities have local organizations and hotlines don't hesitate to look them up if you search on website just if you type suicide also you will get so many hotline numbers and you can get so many information and resources tailored to our community now this was all about what are the causes of suicide what are the warning signs how to help so today let's commit to raising awareness and breaking the stigma around the mental health share information about mental health and suicide prevention with your friends and family talk about it participate in local events and uh, virtual webinars dedicated to these issues remember every conversation helps and every act of kindness matters together we can build a more supportive and understanding community let's keep the conversation going on not just today but every day remember reaching out for help is a sign of strength not weakness if you and someone you know is struggling please use the resources available to you let's continue to support each other and work together a world where people feels valued and heard dear listeners that was the speech our responsibilities in preventing suicide delivered by mrs sanju pant this talk came to you from the studios of akashavani mangaluru